People first occupied Scotland in the Paleolithic era, where small groups of hunter-gatherers lived off the land, hunting wild animals and foraging for plants. However, during this period, living in Scotland wasn't as simple as it sounds. While Scotland today is safe from natural disasters, this wasn't always the case, as around 62,000 BC, a 25 metre high tsunami devastated the coastal communities in the Northern Isles in eastern Scotland. 4000 BC marks a rough time frame in which the people of Scotland first started cultivating and claiming ownership to the land during the Neolithic period. They built permanent shelters, made pottery and stone axes, and created tombs to house the remains of their ancestors. 2500 BC saw the arrival of metalworking, signalling the start of the Bronze Age in a period of technological change. Burial structures, like that that was uncovered at St Kilda, and ornaments made from exotic metals such as gold, amber or jet show that people were displaying their wealth and status and that social hierarchies were starting to form. The Iron Age came next in 700 BC and saw people making better tools and weapons. Communities also built defensive forts of timber, earth and stone to keep enemies at bay. Evidence of human activity dating back to the Iron Age has been uncovered in the caves beneath Culloden Castle. Scotland's recorded history began with the arrival of the Romans. Emperor Claudius invaded Britain in 43 AD and soon ventured north. Despite the Romans' best efforts to fortify the border with Hadrian's Wall in 122 AD and central Scotland with the Antonine Wall 20 years later, they were fought back by the Caledonians and the Picts and eventually retreated from Britain altogether in 410 AD. The early historic period refers to the era when Scotland's history first started to be recorded in writing. There are records, written mostly by monks, that tell us that Christianity reached the west of Scotland in 563 AD, when St Columba arrived on the Isle of Iona in Argyll to establish a monastery from where he would send missionaries across North Britain to convert its inhabitants to Christianity. Around 800 AD, the Vikings arrived from Norway and Denmark to trade and settle around Scotland, both on the west coast and in the north in places like Fair Isle. Early historic Scotland was a melting pot of different groups. The Britons, the Picts, the Angles, the Gaels, Scots and the Norse. Importantly however, in 843 AD, Kenneth MacAlpin united the native Picts and Scots, forming the Kingdom of Alba. Macbeth ruled as King of Alba from 1040 until his death in battle in 1057. Macbeth is perhaps one of the best known early Scottish kings, after being immortalised forever in Shakespeare's fictitious retelling of his life. In the 12th century, the Kingdom of Alba continued to grow and became a feudal society. The Treaty of Falaise, signed by William I, ushered a period of relative peace in Scotland. During the reigns of Alexander II and then Alexander III, more land was turned over to agriculture, trade with the continent bolstered the economy, and monasteries and abbeys grew and flourished around the country. A succession crisis brought unrest to Scotland after the death of Alexander III. England's monarch, Edward I, believed he should be recognised as the overlord of Scotland and his troops marched north in a series of bloody sieges. In 1297, Edward's army planned to cross the River Forth at Stirling Bridge. The Scots seized the opportunity to attack, forcing the English army to retreat. It was here where one of Scotland's most famous figures, William Wallace, earned his place in the history books forever, as he was knighted and appointed Guardian of Scotland the following year. Unrest continued well into the 14th century, when Robert the Bruce took the throne and was crowned king in 1306. Fighting continued until 1314, at the Battle of Bannockburn, where Robert the Bruce and his army defeated Edward II, a major turning point in his rule. In 1320, the Declaration of Arbroath proclaimed Scotland's status as an independent sovereign state. The declaration was written in Latin, signed by Scottish barons and nobles, and was sent to Pope John XXII. Though its effect was largely symbolic, the powerful declaration remains an important document in Scottish history. Many historians believe it inspired America's founding fathers 
to write the United States Declaration of Independence. 1450 marked her renaissance in Scotland as the cultural, intellectual and artistic movement that took hold around Europe brought significant changes to Scotland. Education, intellectual life, literature, art, architecture, music and politics all advanced in the late 15th century. Perhaps Scotland's most famous queen, Mary Queen of Scots, was just six days old when her father died and she was crowned in 1542. Her reign was marked by Catholic-Protestant conflict and civil unrest in a period known as the Rough Wooing. In England, worried about the possibility of a Catholic plot against her, Elizabeth I imprisoned Mary. And later, after almost 19 years of captivity, had her executed at Fotheringhay Castle in Northamptonshire in 1567 at the age of 44. In 1603, James VI succeeded the throne at just 13 months old after Mary was forced to abdicate. When Elizabeth I died with no children, James VI succeeded the English throne and became James VI of Scotland and James I of England in a historic move that's now known as the Union of Crowns. The Glorious Revolution refers to the events of 1688-89 that saw King James VII of Scotland and the Second of England deposed and succeeded by one of his daughters and her husband. James's overt Roman Catholicism, his suspension of the legal rights of dissenters, and the birth of a Catholic heir to the throne raised discontent among many, particularly non-Catholics. Opposition leaders invited William of Orange, a Protestant who was married to James's daughter Mary, also a Protestant, to, in effect, invade Scotland and England. James's support dwindled and he fled to France. William and Mary were then crowned joint rulers. In 1707, the Act of Union brought Scotland even closer to England by creating a single parliament of the United Kingdom of Great Britain at the Palace of Westminster. The late 17th century and early 18th century saw numerous Jacobite uprisings, such as in 1689 and 1715, ultimately having little success. The Jacobites believed the Stuart dynasty were the rightful heirs to the throne. The Battle of Culloden in 1746 was the final Jacobite rising and the last battle fought on British soil. The Jacobites were no match for the Hanoverian army. The battle lasted just an hour and the Jacobite army was brutally crushed. Shortly after the defeat of the Jacobites, a period known as the Highland Clearances began. A number of laws were introduced to attempt to assimilate the Highlanders. Wearing traditional tartan attire was banned and clan chiefs had their rights to jurisdiction removed. The ideas of philosophers living in Scotland during the Age of Enlightenment shaped the modern world. The intellectual movement sought to understand the natural world and the human mind and ranged across philosophy, chemistry, geology, engineering, technology, poetry, medicine, economics and history. Figures like Thomas Hobbes, David Hume, Adam Smith, Robert Burns and Sir Walter Scott are still celebrated for their achievements today. At the beginning of the 19th century, industrial advances and wealth accumulated from the trade of tobacco, sugar and cotton bring about the dawn of urban Scotland. The country shifted from rural to urban and huge towns, massive factories and heavy industry took hold. Mining, shipbuilding and textiles were very important to Scotland's development during this time. Around 200 years ago, 90% of Scotland's population lived in the countryside. Now, 90% lives in towns and cities. Scottish soldiers played a significant role in the First World War. The Germans were so intimidated by Scottish soldiers that they referred to them as devils in skirts or ladies from hell, in reference to their fearless fighting style and traditional kilt attire. Glasgow's Clydeside was an important centre during the war. Products from the shipyards, steelworks and iron foundries were vital to the war effort. Likewise in the Second World War, the Scots were notable contributors to the fight against Hitler. The Clyde, for instance, became Britain's main port, with more than 52 million tonnes of munitions and supplies landing there. The war brought about death, misery and destruction to Scotland on a huge scale, but it also helped to make Scots of all classes rub shoulders with each other and to give the economy a lift it desperately needed after the dark years of the Depression. 
1967 saw the drilling of the first North Sea oil well, which was considered a massive industrial achievement of the time, creating a huge supporting industry in Scotland and giving the UK access to oil made at home for the first time. Also in the same year, Glasgow-based football team Celtic became the first British football team to win what is now known as the Champions League, doing so with an all-Scottish lineup. In the 1990s, films like Braveheart and Trainspotting helped to establish Scotland as a cultural powerhouse. Authors, artists and musicians from Scotland were enjoying renewed success. The global phenomenon Harry Potter was written in Edinburgh, and in 1997, scientists from the Roslyn Institute successfully cloned the first mammal from an adult cell, Dolly the Sheep. Politically, the calls for more devolved powers had been growing for decades, and resulted in a referendum in 1979. A second referendum was held in September 1997, with the vote delivering greater powers. In 1999, the Scottish Parliament reconvened for the first time in nearly 300 years, ushering a new era for the Scottish people. The Scottish Parliament building at the foot of the Royal Mile officially opened on the 9th of October 2004. In 2012, the Edinburgh Agreement was signed by Scotland's First Minister Alex Salmond and the UK Prime Minister David Cameron. It paved the way for a once-in-a-generation referendum on Scottish independence in 2014 by confirming the Scottish Parliament's power to hold a vote that will be respected by both governments. On the 18th of September 2014, the people of Scotland voted. In response to the question, should Scotland be an independent country, 45% voted yes and 55% voted no. The Glasgow Climate Pact was adopted at the COP26 UN Climate Conference in Glasgow in November 2021 to help tackle the global climate emergency. COP26 was attended by world leaders, climate experts and public figures from nearly 200 countries. That concludes my timeline of Scottish history. While I couldn't cover everything, many of the key talking points from Scottish history were addressed. To finish up as a bonus, here are a list of Scottish inventions alongside the dates they were invented. 